Hi, I'm Morton Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovers Chat. Hello and welcome back to the Rovers Chat YouTube channel. As you can see, I'm joined by Rovers defender Sam Bynes to have a look through his career so far and look ahead to the game against Burnley. Obviously, recording this a bit before the Burnley game, so although it'll be out afterwards, you know, you listen to Burnley a bit on the channel. So, Sam, thanks for joining us. No worries at all. It's uh, it's good to be here. I've seen a lot of what you that you guys do, and uh, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's nice that you watch it. So, obviously, the first question, you had your big injury in the summer. How's, you know, how's the rehab going? Yeah, no, uh, it's going well so far. I'm about three three months post-op. Um, going to see the surgeon, Sam Church, next week. Um, hopefully, he gives a bit. Uh, he gives a go-ahead to get after a bit more and um, maybe be out on the grass end the next month, start of Jan. So, yeah, no, it's going well. Uh, it's good to hear you on your way back. I just wanted to ask you a question about that. How good was Bradley Dack, you know, in it? Because I saw that, did he send you a message about it, getting in touch with you? Yeah, um, so I went for the scan on the Wednesday. And um, well, I got the results straight away because um, it was a serious injury. Um, and then on the Thursday morning, so before it had even been like broadcasted out, um, I got a voice note from, from Dacky. Um, just pretty much just saying, just keep your head up, and um, he's just saying it. It's hard. He was just saying it's hard to put into words like how you how you'll be feeling at this moment in time. But he's just he's just saying just to keep your head up, and um, anything I needed to talk to him about uh, with regards to the injury or the rehab, he, he said he was happy to to for whenever, whether that be like I call him or just even at the training ground. But there's been a few conversations to be fair, and just in the gym and physio room where I've just sprung a question upon him and he's uh, he's happy to answer it. Oh, it's always good to have someone like him, isn't it, around him? You know, that's the main thing for such a young player like yourself. Now, obviously, we'll start with how you, you know you got into football growing up. You were a Blackburn lad, obviously. How close to Weaver Park did you grow up? So, I grew up in Plettgate. I don't know if you're if you know yeah. where Plek is. Um, so I grew up in Plekgate, which is quite close to town. Um, yeah, I used to train down at the Brick um, quite quite often, to be fair. When I was younger, whether it be summer camp, so I did a couple of things with the FA there. So yeah, no, I've been, I've been around Ewood since quite a young age. Um, had a season ticket since I've been about five. So yeah, no, I'm pretty familiar with the, uh, with the area. Yeah, and obviously you mentioned your season ticket. Have you had to give that up? No, I guess you have. When did you give it up? Um, was it hard? Obviously, I know that with playing youth football, you're probably playing on the weekend, so you know maybe you miss a bit of the football. But was it hard to actually carry on playing and not go into the games? Or was it, you know, you're off to do your life dream, aren't you, really? Um, well, actually, my uh, my mum, she, uh, she loves the seats that we've got so I do still actually have my season ticket that um, she renews every season so uh, yeah we sit the upper tier of the Jack Walker so even though like you said coming through the academy there's I haven't been able to go to as many games as I would have liked to but um, yeah now my mum she uh, she still renews the season ticket so yeah I've still got my seat for if I want to go uh, sit with him on a Saturday. Oh that's good to hear it's good to still have that I can't believe you've still got one in the club to be honest but yeah, uh, I've told her she, I can get um, like tickets just through the club, but she just loves the seats that she's got. So yeah, right, it's a good time. Must be good for her seeing, you know, knowing she's got a son who's, you know, so close to the first team. Obviously, we mentioned your injury. So how did you actually get picked up by the academy? Was it, you know, a simple, you know, we see some get scouted at grassroots, some are picked up through like sessions within the club. How did you end up, you know, playing for Rovers? Um. Well, I'd, I played for the I played for Blackburn Town team, and I think the um, the coach of the town team is called Nathan Sargeson. I don't know if he still does any scouting work with with Blackburn now, but it, it was through him that I got a, a trial at Blackburn, um, which I was initially uh, released from. So I I got told no on the trial, um, but I was also training with uh, Man City at the time. Um, but yeah, I think after I'd been released from the trial, I think it was only a a month, a month later that Blackburn changed the mind and just decided to to sign me from there. And I was about, I think I went on trial when I was ten, 
and then I think I was signed when I was 11 or I went on trial at 11 signed at 11 but I, I signed at 11 years old so yeah been there a while how good's that feeling as a Blackburn fan you know to know that your club won't you because I know you know I know there's all these academies around maybe City weren't as <clears throat> you know weren't as big when you were coming through the academy as they are now but What's that like knowing that, you know, your club at least wants you at that level, whether you go on and make it, you know, we know what football can be like when it gets to 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, but how good's that feeling, to, you know, for you and your family, really? Yeah, I think um, I think as soon as um, Blackburn, like, showed interest, I'd, I think um, even with, with my dad, mum and dad, I think there was only really one one option that that we wanted uh, we wanted me to play for. So yeah, I think even though I was training at City, I think as soon as Blackman came in, I pretty, I think my mind was pretty much uh, made up. Yeah, and of course you mentioned the enjoyable moment. Uh, the FA Youth Cup, obviously a big tournament. Rovers have got Kadistri in it. You captain the side. What's that like playing in that tournament? Because obviously a lot of games are Ewood, aren't they? When the home games, you know, you play under the lights. There's a few. You know, I think there's a good crowd on as well for youth football how good is that to you know walk the side out and you've got a bit of a backing behind you because youth football's obviously not backed nowhere near as well as the first team is mm -hmm. yeah no um i think uh coming through um playing in the youth cup uh i think even experienced professionals now will will tell you how important um the just enjoying the youth cup run is um because academy football um especially coming through it's not uh like as what's the word you can say for it like it's, it doesn't mean anything the results but fa youth yeah. cup is you're playing to stay in and obviously quite a few fans will, will come down to um you know to just just see what youngsters are coming through and yeah i think that especially when i was a first year scholar we got to the quarterfinals and i think that that cup run was was really enjoyable because we actually I think we we're in League One at the time, so we had to come in from round one. So we we played quite a few games in in that season. And then the second year scholar when I was captain wasn't the uh I didn't have the greatest one. I think we got knocked out in the third round. So, yeah. Yeah I think I think I attended that one. Is, yeah. I can remember. Yeah, yeah used great. to do a few at Youth Cup games before uh before COVID. That full run as well that we had, you know, I don't think you played in that one, but the one that we had as the COVID hit and, you know, we beat Arsenal and then I think we went out in the semi-finals the year later. It's, it's always good, I think, if anyone's not gone down, you know, if you can make it down to Ewood for any of them games, I'd recommend it. Some really good football as well, really good talents that you see coming through and, you know, a lot of our young players have played in it that are now in the first team. Now, I mentioned there the youth players in the first team. How good or how promising is it for you when you see so many people come through? You know, you've got Ash Phillips, uh, Hayden Carter, Lewis Travis, John Buckley, Jack Vale, uh, Danny Butworth got in his chance last year. You know, you can name all the academy products, couldn't you? But how good is that and how promising is it knowing that there's a, cl you know, a clear pathway, really? Yeah, I, I think, well, like you said, even even uh, in the first team at the minute and uh, players that have gone, so even like Dara and, and, and Nyambi, um, I think it's a real credit to the club and um, how good the academy is and the pathway is through through to the first team. Uh, I think competing with, you know, all the big clubs in England um, is 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 just massive for the club. And I think it is a real credit to them how many they do bring through. And um, it's a lot easier when uh, you, you do break through to the first team because obviously you know a lot of the lads anyway because they've been in a similar position to you have. So, yeah, no, it's brilliant. Yeah, I think I'd go on record as saying we're probably the best, best in the Championship by a mile, I think, and, you know, up there with the Premier League clubs in terms of academy output. You know, we've had Stuart Jones on before, uh, Tony Carr has been on, Matt sharon has been on, and they've all spoke about you know, creating that pathway. Is that what it always feels like? Because if you get some clubs that, you know, maybe United and that, that go out and buy a lot of players now, Man City have done it in the last few years where they go and spend, you know, more money than probably championship clubs spend on first team players. Do you always have that reassurance that you're going to get your chance and, you know, you're not going to go and get knocked out the team off a £15 million centre-back like we've seen City do and we've seen Chelsea do? Yeah, I think I think uh, the past few years has been um, quite. It's been quite prominent of of them wanting to bring through a lot more 
of the academy products. Um, and I think it's it's brilliant for the players, but also brilliant for the club because ob- obviously you do have to put money into the academy to, to fund it. But I think, I mean, the players that we're starting to bring through and have brought through, I think, is uh, is brilliant. And um, yeah, I think uh, long may it continue. Yeah, and I think you're looking at, you know, three, say three, four million a year for the academy, but how much money would you spend going out and buying the Nash Phillips or buying the Jack Vale or Lewis Travis? It really does pay for itself. And I think it's probably the club's biggest legacy, the academy. And, you know, you're one of hundreds of examples, really, that have gone on. And even if they got, they don't go and do it here, you know, uh, Stuart Jones spoke about getting a career in football, even if you're not doing it with Blackburn. And I think that's the biggest thing for us. In terms of the first team, now obviously you've been training with them over the summer. How was the optimism heading into the new season with the new manager? Obviously, Tony Mowbray did a good job with the club and the new manager can always be, you know, you never know what can happen. But how good was the optimism, you know, heading into this season? Yeah, I think um, from day one when, when the new gaffer came in, I think it was it was like a breath of fresh air, you know, fresh ideas um, on the training pitch and in, and in games. And I think there was a like quite a buzz of optimism. I think I think from the start that that we had, especially where I think I think did we win our first five games? Um, uh, so yeah, we, yeah, I, I think first three in a cup game, weren't it? Yeah, something yeah. like that. But um, yeah, no, from from day dot when he came in, I think there was a lot of positivity um, around him and and the, that the players had for him. So yeah. And the one thing I want to speak up on, they mentioned about players, young players doing interview, uh, doing presentations, you know, to work out how to stop a game. Have you been involved in any of them presentations that have been highlighted by him? Yeah, we, I was involved in one in um, in pre season. He, uh, I don't know if anyone else has, has spoken about this, but he's he's really big on um, a word called Klein, which is um, about the everyone like running back in and getting back into shape. So we did a presentation um explains to him what climb was so that we showed that um we understand what it meant so yeah but i know he did he's done quite a lot and he's still he's still doing them um throughout the season as well what's that like having a manager like that because it's something i've never heard from you know managers obviously i'm not involved inside a football club but is it nice to have you know maybe a different approach because it's nerve-wracking isn't it in front of people even people you spend day to day with you know what have you seen the players develop from that is it just learning how to solve problems is it confidence you know what is it that it actually brings to the club uh well it probably is a bit of confidence i think i think the biggest thing you can have um in a team is a, is a good relationship with the manager and if he's willing to stay until four or five o'clock in a meeting with you helping you to understand his philosophy and how you want he wants you to play and also Anything you need to get off your chest, it's it's really good to have the relationship with the gaffer, and I think it probably has helped a lot of players um, during the season to probably come out of the shell a bit more and um, play the best to the best of their ability. Yeah, I've been really impressed by him. I think you know, from an out, outside perspective, you look at you know you look at Rovers and and he's a young manager realistically, isn't he? Forty six year old, forty five, forty six really young you know you'll have some players that are only 12 13 years younger than him how influential has he been in developing personal players games because i think rovers fans we've seen a lot of players develop the game in different ways than we did last year how much has he helped you know develop the tactical mind as well as you know the confidence that we mentioned yeah i I think his um his approach to detail and how how detailed his actual um, presentations are and when he talks to you, how passionate he is. It, the information he can give you is, it, it can really develop you. And I think even even the older pros in the team um, will probably have learnt a lot this season just from him that they might not have learnt previously in their career. I think he's, he's a very good manager um, with that aspect. Yeah, I think he seems to be a, you know, from even from the outside, the way he speaks, he's really infectious. I think his interviews, I'm sure you've sat in many meetings with him where he's been the same in terms of speaking and the infectious side of him. And how, you know, a cup runs, we'll just quickly focus on the cup. Obviously, the draw's taking place tonight as we're recording by time it's out. We'll know where we've got. But 
how good do you think a cup run could be to the side? Because we all know the main focus in the team. For any championship club, we all know the real, you know, the real focus. But how good is it? How uplifting is a cup run, especially when you beat a West Ham side that I think I saw a stat that they had more international players on the pitch than we had over 21s, which, you know, summed up how strong they were. Yeah. Does it lift the place when the cup run's going on like this? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, uh, I think the last cup run I can remember was, I don't know if it was the FA Cup or League Cup, where we played Liverpool, was it in the quarter or the semi-final? FA Cup. Yeah, yeah we when, when we drew nil nil. Yeah, we drew nil nil. I actually went to that game and um, I remember when, when the team gets a cup run, um, you, you just kind of see players with confidence, but also it gives you know others opportunity. I mean, Ainsley played yesterday and he won to play many games this season and he I thought he was terrific so it gives the whole team um you know players that might not be playing as much in the league um opportunities to to play and just enjoy playing in the cup and I think hopefully if we get a decent cup run play against some big teams um get tick off a few stadiums because the stadium last night was a decent one but um well that's yeah. my, did you go down to the game or was you no I didn't you know I was going to but um I think I think it was it was supposed to be a rail strike on on yesterday, so I just I never bothered, and then the rail strike got cancelled on the Saturday, and I just I, I think it was too late then. But um, I think I seen there was a decent following. I think there was. Did you end up going? Yeah, I made a trip down. It was a long journey, but worth more it. than worth it in this celebration. Yeah. Oh, it's unreal, and like I think as well with a cup that always a positive, especially for a team like Rovers is the amount of young players that get the goal. You know, we spoke before, Adam Wharton got his goal in the Hartlepool game, Ash Phillips, Jack Vale. You know, there's that many people that come through. I think the Cup's always good. Now, obviously, we'll round off soon, but the season, you know, we're just about to head into the World Cup. Who knows what England will do, but coming back into it, Rovers are going to be in a good place regardless of, you know, what happens Sunday. Fingers crossed there's a win. What's the hope for the rest of the season? Is it, just carry on putting points on the board, you know, the cliches of put points in the bag. Do you just do that and then just see where you end up? Because we all know as fans that the first season, you're not going to win every game in the first season. We've seen it already. Is it just keep putting points on the board? Is that what you're getting told? Just keep winning games and don't really bother looking at the table as much? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I don't really think, uh, I think this season going into this season, it was more of a, like a pressure off type season um, yeah. because obviously the new manager was coming in and um, uh, we we are quite a young team so but I think the position we're in now I think I think it is yeah just just put, try and put as many points on the board as you can um, I think we've done amazing to be in the position we're in so far and I, and I don't see why we can't end up in the top six towards the, towards the end of the season with the way we've been playing recently um, I think obviously um, the team we've got now um Hopefully, Bez stays, and um, well, which I'm sure he will do. Um, but yeah, I think with the team we've got now, um, I think there's no reason why we can't make the top six. No, and you mentioned Ben, and you know he seems to be a big character around the place. And you mentioned how young they are, and I think you forget how young he actually is, don't you? You forget that he's you know 22, 23 year old, and he's almost a senior figure in this side. He's been here that long; it feels like he's you know one of the Danny Ayala's really who obviously an older player, but not been here as long. In terms of, you know, pushing on and is the, the question I wanted to ask was, say you lose a game and, you know, maybe you've not put the best performance in, which happens, you know, no one expects a club to do 46. Man City don't do 38 games well. Is there a way that you maybe prepare for the next matches and going into it? Or is it, forget that happened, push on, move on? You know, one game's not going to make a season. Is it just get back into it? Because obviously Rovers had that win-loss, win-loss that we seem to have stopped now. But what is the key to actually going from that loss to getting back to winning ways? I think, like you said, it's probably just, just brushing it under the carpet. Um, I think there's been a couple losses this season um, that haven't been the greatest performances. But I think the best... Um, the best thing about that win loss run showed that um, the team could bounce back from 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 a poor performance or or a loss. Um, so yeah, I think it's just mainly brushing it under the carpet and just trying to keep keep going, uh, focus on the good good parts of the performance and uh, keep going on into the next game. 
Yeah, that's it, isn't it? I think the thing I always get as well with these performances, it's no point dwelling on it. You know, you'll see social media that's, you know, we're all down about a game and then you win the next game and everyone forgets about it. It's just, I guess that's the way football is in terms of it. My final question for you is, what are your hopes for the rest of the season and going forward? Obviously, I thought a really good move by the club was the contract that you signed, you know, after, after the injury. I think that was a classy move as well by the club to give you that chance to push back on, you know, we all know what ACL injuries can do in terms of taking time. What are your hopes for the season and going forward? Is it breakthrough? Is it just get back to playing football to begin with and then take it bit by bit? Yeah, I think my aim for this season, um, at the minute, all I can focus on is is just getting getting back on the pitch and um, you know um, rehabbing as well as I can do. Um, to you know, get to the top of my performances when I come back. Um, so I think that that's I'm not really putting much pressure on on this season. It's mainly just getting back fit and supporting the team as much as I can. Yeah, that's it. You've still got your part to play, haven't you? Even if you're not going to necessarily play football, because it's all about squad, isn't it? I think that's the one thing you've seen this year. Well, it's the one thing that's been in for a long time. We. You know, I'm sure guys like Bradley Dak and Ben Burton Diaz keep you going, even when it's maybe not going well. They seem to be the pair that would be cracking jokes. The squad's such a key thing, isn't it? I think that's the one thing from this year. Uh, so that's where we'll round off. Thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate you coming on, taking time out. You know, it's been a pleasure having you on. No problem at all. And good luck, obviously, with every rehab. Fingers crossed we see you back in the rob show. I think pre-season, I'm sure you'll know yourself. you really good pre-season for yourself and you know, getting involved. So we hope to see you back in soon. But that's where we'll round off. If you want to hit like, hit subscribe, do all that stuff. Really appreciate people listening, subscribe. You know, keep watching the videos, keep tuning in. It's much appreciated.